Good evening, my name's Fiona, I'm from Elio Moon Arts and tonight we're going to have a look at what I've done to this box so far. I did do a video on it earlier today and when I went to go edit it, for some reason it hasn't turned out very well at all. So I'm just going to run through what I've done. So I've got, got a shoe box, I'll grab one, another one that I've got here just to show you. Uh, this was a, a slight, this is a slightly smaller box to what I used. So this was just a normal shoe box. I've taken the lid of this shoe box and I've got, where is that? Here it is. I've just got a little, um, you can either use one of these exacto knives or um, just a Stanley knife. So I've just gone around and I've just been very careful and cut the top out of the box. Okay, so I'm just going to take all of that away. Let's do it on this side. Maybe this way. This way might be a bit easier for me to be able to see what I'm doing. I'm not really all that worried if I've got a few raggedy edges because I'm going to cover it, cover it anyway. Off. Okay, not quite. Nearly through. And then just onto this piece. I probably shouldn't be cutting on this glass mat, but I don't seem to be hitting it at this present point in time. So now I'm just going to move this up like so, and then I'll just cut across this one here. So that's what I've done. I've taken, so now I've got these two pieces. So on the box I've actually put it so that the this side that would normally be up this side that would normally be on the bottom is now on the top and I'm going to glue that into place on the box and I'll glue this box is not the greatest well there was the other one to be honest with you but um, you can see these are come apart so I'm just going to put a bit of extra glue in those then I'm going to glue this around the top of my box so and I want it to be at the top here and I want all of these top pieces to line up together now whilst that was drying um, and after I put the glue on it I grabbed some of these little gold clips and I placed these all around it just to hold it in place until all of the glue had dried so basically I had something looking like this just letting all the glue dry on it, making sure all of those edges were up to the very top. So I had a project that looked something like this. So this is what I had. Um, then I needed to create some compartments for inside. So I took the lid, this piece that I cut off. So I measured how how long my box was and how deep my box was and I cut off a piece that would fit in inside my box and I wanted it to come well it didn't have to come all the way to the top but I did I made it come all the way to the top and then the piece that was left over I actually cut off into little little sections to make compartments inside that so there was a big piece that I cut off and I put down the center of the box which made it look like this so you got the centre one and then I made these little ones here. Now I also needed to grab hold of a little bit of extra card to make some little tabs. Now the tabs that I made were one inch wide and two inches long. And then I folded the tabs in half and I glued them to each of the little, um, to each of the bottom of these and making sure that they were in the right way. And then I glued them. So one on this side and one on this side and I glued them to the box. So there's one here and one here and I've glued them down to the bottom of the box. I also made um, six of them for this. So there was three on either side of this centre piece as well. And that's just to help to give it a little bit of um, sturdiness and make sure that these aren't going to move too much. 
after that, after I'd done that, so I used Couture Creations tacky glue to do around this top piece. So which is the, let me find it and I'll find it. So just this one. Um, no, it was the clear tacky, sorry. I'll tell a lie. So it was just this clear tacky glue. So I used that to go all around the outside of this. Um, and glue all these pieces on. I also used it on the top piece of the other box where these come apart just to strengthen it up a bit. So once I've done that and I've put all of these in, I then went ahead and let it dry for a little while. I actually got my hair dryer out and I dried it as much as I could. Um, I still left these clips on for as long as possible. Um, I really wanted to make sure this box wasn't the um, sturdiest of boxes that I've that I've had in in regards to shoe boxes but um, it was the only ones that I had at the moment so I then got hold of the box and I got some gel medium because this box isn't as strong as other boxes could be I use this to actually attach um, where are those squares of paper I've got they're not there Give me two seconds and I'll just see if I can find them. Mm. Oh, okay, I'm back. So I have this box here that I have bits of... Um, papers out of books, out of old books in. Um, this was a piece that was left over from it. I just put all my scrap bits in here. Pop that on there for a minute. So I got squares of paper and I covered it all. So for this internal part, I've just simply folded them over the top because I wanted this top piece covered. When it comes to doing these corners, I've folded my piece in half and in half again so I had a little square then I've gone and I've ripped down one side like this and I've just folded it over to create this little um, square pocket I then placed that on the box like this and so I've glued all of that down and then I've cut up this center piece here and then split it and put it in two. This just creates a nice straight, it just creates a really nice edge on your box. I also use this method when I'm covering um, inside the box internally. So I grabbed it and I made these and I actually glued them into the corner. So you've got something that, so it fits into the box nice and neatly. So I did that in all the corners. And basically then once it was all done, even though I used the matte medium to glue it all down, I also gave it um, a good coat of matte medium all over it just to help strengthen up the box and now we are at this stage where it's nice and dry it's been about four hours since I created this and we're going to now um, start decorating it so I'm just going to go over and close the door because my husband's running around the house and I don't think he realizes I'm filming again So this is basically what we're going to put into our ephemera box. So I've this is one of this is just a plastic container that I've got full of different tags. And so these will all fit in, in here really nicely. So and it would just be nice to have them all organized a little better. So ones that are a little bulkier I might put in this smaller area and then we'll go from here. But now we're going to decorate the outside. And it's I'm not even sure what I want on this, but I was thinking that I would grab some modelling paste, um, which I have here, and I should have, yes, a, a palette knife. What I'm going to do, I've got this stencil here. I couldn't tell you who it's by, but it's a Sea Life Type 1. And I thought perhaps 
I'm not sure whether I want a stencil. I'm actually thinking that I might paint my box first, actually. I think that's what I might do. I might grab my paints. I might just grab a palette and some paint. And I might paint this box first. So that's a pretty easy process that we can all do. So I think I'm going to use Thalo Blue, which is a transparent blue. So I'll still have that text that'll come through underneath. So just a little bit of paint. And I might grab some regular gel medium. So this is a Tilio regular gel medium. This will just help the paint. Um, it'll stay wet for a little longer and it'll just help the paint go on much nicer. So I'm just going to put that all over the, all over this side of the box to start off with. I'm not going to paint the bottom of the box. I'm purely just going to do um, up around the sides. Okay, now I'll start adding a bit of paint to this. This is a really beautiful blue. And see what I mean by it's um, transparent? I can still see all of those beautiful um, bits of paper underneath. Just covering it all. That was just a little bit of water um, that I had there just to wet this off because I really don't want this to be too dark. But I do want it to have quite a good even coverage on it. Don't know whether it's my husband or whether it was one of the animals trying to come in. Okay, so that's one side done. So I'm going to do that all the way around the box. So I'm going to stop talking and um, I'll probably speed this pit up once I get into editing um, this project today. I'll just take some of that out. So this is my palette. It's just got a bit of the regular gel medium in it and also the phthalo blue. I'm just going to put that on there. Halo blue again. Okay. 
Now, if you have any questions about how I did this box or you want any tips, um, please don't hesitate to ask me. Um, I'm quite happy to answer all of your questions that you may have. I'm sorry that the first part of this video didn't work, but it sometimes happens and I'm not very good with the videos and stuff yet. I'm still practicing and learning as I go along. Uh, I still have to figure out how I'm going to speed this up yet. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll have to leave it because I don't know exactly what I'm doing yet. Okay, now to this end piece. I might have to actually do the base of this. But not right now. I'm just going to get this bit done and get it dry. Now, I mean, you don't have to paint your box. You can do yours however you like. This is just something that I like. Um, um, I like lots of colour, so to me, this works really well. Um, I've seen people do, probably people have probably done this in a vintage style. I think Kerry the Crafter, I think he done done something like this in a, much more vintage style. And that's okay, so that's all of that painting. I might just do the very top edge on this box box just so that it looks a little finished. want this top edge done not that anybody other than me is going to really see this but I do want it finished And then I'll just dry this off with a hairdryer. Okay, one more edge to do and then we are just flip this around. Just move that back this way a little bit so I can see. I might just have to stand up so I can see this.
For those of you who have watched a few of my videos and noticed how bad the um, filming is sometimes, I'm just wondering if you wouldn't mind dropping me a line and letting me know what you think of the angle of the camera in the position that it's in today on this video. Um, or whether I still need to maybe look at getting something else to try and video these in a better way. Just darkening up these top this top edge. So I've got way too much paint on my on my palette. wondering do I paint the inside of this because I've got so much I might just take it down a little bit further into this box just so I can use up this paint I've got on on my brush it doesn't have to be really neat or anything it's just just a way of using up the paint so this paint that I'm using is Atelier um, uh, fine artist paints uh, interactive acrylic and like I said this is a transparent one and it's a series one this one This brush that I'm using, it's just a, a Montmartre brush. It's just a flat three quarter inch brush that I'm using. Okay, nearly there. So the idea of using the um, regular gel gloss, um, well, it's a glossy colour for starters. It makes it all glossy. And it will also just keep the paint wet, and wet enough to work with for a longer period of time. And unlike water, it doesn't dilute the colour. So I'm led to believe. So that's what I've been told. Okay. So 
that box done. I'm just going to go pop these in the sink before they um, dry up and I can't get everything clean. So I'll just turn this off and I'll come back in just a moment. Okay, so I'm back. I've just washed up my brushes and stuff. I'm just going to dry this box off a little bit. So be a little bit noisy for a minute. Um, and then we'll get to work with um, putting some modelling paste on this and then painting the rest of it. <laughs> Okay, now that's pretty dry now. It might be dry enough for me to use. Just a, another thing I'd like to point out to you, just while that's sort of cooling down a little bit, this mat that I'm using, I don't know whether you can see it, I've got some of that blue paint on here. This is a Couture Creations um, glass mat. I love this thing. Spray a bit of water on it. And all those bits of paint, and just get a little cloth. All those bits of paint just wipe right off. Um, earlier today I had, um, I was using it and I had glue all over it. Um, I was very careful about what I did, but I just grabbed one of these type of blades and I just scraped all the, the glue off it. They just clean up beautifully. Um, use it all the time when I'm doing alcoholics as well. Okay, so our box is painted. Now I've got to decide on what we're going to put on the side. I'm thinking I'm going to use some modelling paste. And this transfer, the reason I went for that blue is because I like the idea of all these fish and that being on here. Now I'm going to have to be a little bit careful when I do this slot because... I have this lip that I have here, which I put on to strengthen the box. So I'm going to have to make sure when I put this modelling clay on. And I think what I'll do is I'll put it on. I think I'll put this one on this end. 
and then I'm going to bring bring it down and put the other half on the other end. So this is what the modelling paste looks like. It's just a thick, gluggy stuff. And I'm just going to put some on my palette knife and just gently press some of that through. Wipe that bit off before we move it again. Just making sure I'm getting some of that um, modelling clay through the modelling paste, I should say modelling clay, um, modelling paste through the, through this uh, in particular stencil, in all the places that I need it to be. Okay, so just on this bottom section, I'm just scraping off the excess on the top of the stencil. Just going to go in and put this little bit in up here. And we'll just get part of that fish in that one there. Okay, so we'll pull that off. And there we go. There's the first part of it done. So this next piece, I'm going to put the top half of it up here, take a quick cloth, not my finger, and I'm just going to put the rest of the stencil Now you don't want to put too much modelling paste through it, but you don't want to have too little either. Extra paste set. You can see I've got a couple of little pieces that have gone a bit funny, but that's okay. I'm quite happy with that. I actually quite like it just with the white, to be honest with you. It's actually really pretty. So now I'm going to work on an end. Which we'll start on this end here. And we're just going to do the same thing. So we're going to have to also dry off. Um, these two sides first before we can go forward and do with any of the rest of it. And I'm going to not put this design on one end because I'm wanting to put like that. I think I have to do a little bit here. Do there. So I'm just going to put this aside for a second. I'm just going to go pop this um, in a, I might just grab a bucket and put it in a bucket of water so that I can dry it off and reuse it once I get back around to this side. I just don't want the modelling um, paste to actually dry on this. So I'll just go grab something for it. I'll be back in a moment. <laughs> Excuse me. So I'm back. I'm just going to dry off this box, mainly this end. Oh, excuse me, mainly this end, because um, I'm not sure whether I want to actually put colour onto the rest of it. So I thought if I do this end and I don't like it, I can put that end towards, excuse me for a moment, <coughs> I can put that end towards the wall and nobody will have to see it. So I might, I'll do that and I might put this, because I'm going to use I was thinking about using transparent colours, so maybe even a bit of watercolour. I'm not 100% sure yet. We'll see once this is dry.
already done the modeling paste on and I really just quite I think I actually really like it just as the the um, blend with the white modeling paste I don't think I'm going to actually put anything over the top no I'm not going to put anything over the top I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the modeling paste on this side and I'm going to put something else on this side I might grab Just something that's got a bit of a tag type effect. So I can put on the end. I can put on this as well on the other side. There we go. So I have this making an easy step paste on um, and I think I'm going to put that on the very end of this box and I may put a couple of accoutrements under this box once I manage to just show that I've got something so what I'll do is like when I put this one on I'll pop it on this end and probably center it somewhere like this and that way I'll be able to put um, like what's in the box on it I'm just going to write a seam more on it um, and then well, perhaps perhaps I might use some black chalk paint and paint that paint that with the white black and then write on it with white with a white pen or something white chalk or something so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to model it, use the modeling paste to put the rest of this together and see where I go from there Here. And we'll do the same as what we did before. Just gently that modeling tape through the stencil. And I must admit, I am not the greatest at stenciling, so um, I'm quite prepared to have a few, a, quite a few imperfections in, in mine. If you've got any tips and tricks on stenciling, feel free to let me know, because <laughs> I am still not very good at it. this time and we'll do the same.
just pop out and I'll go and wash these stencils up again and then I'll just take this stencil on and just a little bit of um, masking tape just so it doesn't move. Have a wash of that down because of the mist that I've got on this top, and because it's got the big, uh, this big wide open gap that it's got on it for the main plate. So this hasn't worked very well on this end stick, but I live in the moment. There was no something there, and for me, that's just about every day that I'm doing this type of stuff that I'm trying to work out. very well. I'll just take this one off first and have a look. Okay, so this is what's happened. It's just a bit gunky, um, but that's okay. We'll work with that. But I do want to go higher with the other stencil. This way. I do want to go with a couple of the fish that are on this. fish at this end of the box. So I should be like that. That's why I'm going to come back. Um, and when I come back, I will have dried and washed up my stencils and my brush and all of those things. So I'll be back um, in a few minutes once I've finished drying off this. Okay, bye. Okay, I'm back again. I'm just going to finish drying off the last of this. It's nearly there. <laughs> dry now um, I just realized I don't have um, anything to actually stick on the front of this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into uh, Windows Word and I'm going to do something up in a fancy script 
um, that will fit in this little section here. I'm just going to have a look and see what the how wide it is. Just so I can have a look. So that's approximately two and a half inches wide. I'm going to say it's probably about the same in depth. Yeah, approximately two and a half. So it's two and a half by two and a half inches. So what I'm going to do is I'll have a look in Word and I'm going to print up the word ephemera and I will actually glue that to where that modeling paste is on that on this piece on the front. So it'll be done in black and it'll have ephemera written across here. So probably you're probably not going to see that, but what I will do is when I'm doing the editing, I will take a photo of the box so that you can see it from this um, perspective and you'll be able to see that. Now, the only other thing that's left me to do, apart from adding that, because I'm really happy with the way this is all turned out. I don't know if you can see that very clear, but there you go. There's all my beautiful fish and my um, sea life all underneath there, on both sides. And I'm really, really happy this is the other end. And I'm really, really happy with how that's turned out. And this is the other end. So all there is left for me to do now is to go through and sort out some of my um, tags. So this was a tag that I created the other day. Just something a little bit different. So I've got a heap of gift tags or tags to put into um, journals. I'm just going to put these ones in here. This was another one that I created the other day. And these tree ones so I actually done some painting directly onto here and then I just split them all up and so these are all the same size so let's see what we've got here so these ones like that's bigger smaller this is for my bigger ones this is one I painted a while back another one so I've also I think I'm going to put this these ones here so I've also got a heap of artist trading cards um, when I first started to teach myself to do art I started um, I went on to Facebook and I found a heap of people that were doing these ATCs and I didn't even know what they were at the time so it was all very new to me but I traded with a few people and I got some really beautiful um, cards and bits of stuff from it from people. So this little cat one, I've got I've got a couple of these. These are actually quilted um, uh, ATCs, and I really thought they were lovely. Some people have got some really cool ideas, and there's this little this little cute one. So I just thought that these might be handy to be kept in here as well. Um, some old envelopes which I'll use, some old cards which I'll use up. Let's see what else we've got in here. It's just a letter and some more ephemeris type stuff. So this lady, um, who is this from? Ralph, uh, Ralph Corbin. Um, she's actually decorated the front of her envelope and I just thought that was really cool. So I'm going to keep that and I'll probably use that in one of my art journals when I get around to creating a new one. This was just another card that was given to me, which I thought was really lovely. So and I'll use some of this stuff up. Um, that one's not an ATC, that's just a bit of ephemera. This was an ATC that was created for me and this is made out of that foam type stuff that we get. Um, and then it's just got a few things tapped onto it. Another lady done some alcohol inking and she had this dye that she's cut out these um, cats. And I, and I love cats, so they were really cute. A Halloween one that was sent to me. This was a, a tag that I got from Two Sisters Art. Selena Stevens actually made this. Um, Two Sisters Art used to have a, an art sampler box that used to come out once a month. And this was one of the um, tags that I got gifted. 
um, with the, in the get tag swap that they had. And that's not even going to fit in this box. So I'm going to put that one aside. But I really love this. This is just a couple of the other um, bits that I got. And then there was this one here, which is really beautiful. Another one, the Tree of Life, with a bit of bling on it. And look at this. This is just amazing. This lady does acrylic artwork on these ATCs. I just think they're beautiful. Who was this lady? Her name was... It's called Smell the Rose. Uh, Roxy's Art. Roxy, T-N-U-S-A. Beautiful work. Another... This was Mermaid Tail... Camilla. Can't understand, I can't read the last name. So this was her one that she sent to me. And look at this. This is another acrylic artist. And this is from Tennessee. And this is from Roxy's Art as well. Look at that. That's just pure bliss. Here's another um, Iona Turner. She's from Canada, BC. Yeah, Canada. These were just some other ones. This one was from hand drawn art, Kate um, Brinkham. Brinkham, I think it is. Sorry if I've mispronounced your name. These were just some, this is the same lady. This was a really abstract cat, which I really quite liked a lot that somebody's drawn. I'm not sure what medium it was done in, but this was another one from a lady in the US. Just a couple more, a few different ones. I love this crow. Look at that. It's called Moonlit by um, Anita B I R S E Calgary. Just love it. It's one of my favourites, actually. I might even use that in an art journal page. And this is Debbie. Mm, can't make out the last name. Sorry. There we go. This one of hers. So I've been really lucky and like I love some of these real abstracty ones. They're really, really pretty. And this one was done by a gentleman um, who is also in the other is also in the um, does the ATCs. And his name was I've got him on my Facebook, I think. I can't remember Rob. Mangan, um, I want to say, but I'm not 100%. So this is a small watercolour that he's done um, as an ATC. How cool is that? So just a few other bits. And you put it in this beautiful um, little card holder, which I thought was really neat. That'll fit in there. This is just a, oh, it's another tag. These were just another couple of um, ATCs, and she's just got some... Um, they're just two cat ones and they've got some uh what they call it washi tape on them i need to pull them out just some other tags that i've collected over time which i really like this was diane hodges um a lady that i teach alcohol ink to this is what she came out with um with her some of her alcohol ink ones, I thought they were really cool. This one's a postcard. Just some more of these. And now all of these will be much easier to be seen. And I can have them where I can see them and admire them. It's just a bit of paper. So some of these envelopes are really cool, which I'm going to use in some of my junk journals. I'm thinking very seriously. A few bits of um, bits of paper and stuff there that I need to have a look at, and these card fronts, which I think are really um, really cool. Look at this one. There's all the embossing on it. Really lovely. Uh, a few more bits. From other people that I've traded from, you know, little um, twinchies, I think they call them. They're two 
the little two inches and not instead of the one inch ones. Might that one might have to go somewhere. Another beautiful card that somebody's made and gifted me. And I think that's about it. So now I have a box for all of my ephemera and room to put some more tags. What do you think? I'm quite happy with it. I'm just going to put some of these tags, these other ones, just up in here until I've got time to go through them and sort them all out. So all of this other, all of these other bits that I've got here, I'll end up using for um, other things that I plan on doing. So all these envelopes and stuff will be make, they'll be good in um, junk journals and journals and things. And I like how these, I've got all these different stamps and all the stickers that people have put on their cards and stuff, which I really enjoy. That's the other one I've got to look at. So I'm going to put all of these away in here. Actually, that one's got to go over there. It's got some stuff in there that's got to be looked after. Okay, so I'm going to call it a night. hope you've enjoyed this, um, and I hope to see you soon. And if you have a chance to um, put a photo up of what you've created um, from this from this video i would love to see it so you can contact me on my socials at leo moon arts or leo moon on facebook or oh, leo moon arts on facebook and instagram and also leo moon arts on youtube i have to stop and think about these things i'm really not good with tech um I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope it's inspired you to do something for yourself. But if you if you do create one from this um, video, please put something up on my on my page. I'd really love to um, see what you've come up with. And also, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to um, pop something down in the comments section of this video. I will try and list all of the things that I've used in this video. Um, in the description box below um, so that you know exactly what I've used and yeah I think that's about it have a good night have a safe weekend and hope don't work too hard bye